characteristics of a function for specifically a quadratic function. If you look at the graph that you've been provided here, we're looking for the domain. The domain is the set of all the x's, all the possible x values. So there are several ways we can write this. Notice that this graph really has arrows here and it's going forever to the left and forever to the right. Because of that, x can actually be any value, which means it's all real numbers. Another way that we can state this is that we can go from the farthest left, which would be negative infinity, to the farthest right part of the graph to positive infinity. And remember, we're going to use a curve bracket to show that it's continuous. It continues on. So it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. Positive infinity. Or the other way you can write this as that x, oops, let me try that again, negative infinity is less than x is less than positive infinity. In other words, x can be between negative infinity and positive infinity. It can be any value. Then we look at range. Range is the largest to tallest value it can be. In other words, it's all your y's, any y that it can possibly be. So what you're looking for is what is the smallest number it can be and what is the largest number it can be. The smallest number it can be would be down here. That's where all the really, really small numbers are on the y-axis. So the smallest number is going to actually continue down forever off of this graph, which means it's going to be negative infinity. Well, this can also go all the way up, but it will never actually go past here. So the top point is going to be 4. So now look at this. It continues on forever, which means we need a curve bracket right here. However, it can stop and it can actually hit the 4. It can go up as high as 4, which means we need a square bracket here. So our y, as long as it's less than or it can equal the 4, can be any value. So y is either smaller than or it can equal the 4. Finally, we can write this as an inequality in which we say we have negative infinity is less than y is less than or equal to 4. So y can be any value between negative infinity and 4, but notice we're going to use the equals here because it matches our bracket to say yes, x can actually equal 4. Another set of characteristics for our functions are zeros. Zeros are actually just your x-intercept. And so you look at where this graph crosses the x-axis, which is here and here. So our x-intercept could be here at negative 4 comma 0, and it can be here at 0, 0. Our y-intercept is where this graph will cross the y-axis, which it actually crosses the y-axis right here as well, which is at 0 comma 0. The next characteristic of the function could be intervals of increase and decrease. Now in class, I told you to go ahead and put your negative infinity with a line to positive infinity and put a breaking point in the middle. We know that this is relating to the x. So look at where we can fold this piece of paper. Now you can actually fold the paper so that the parabola is in half. And when you do that, what you're getting, and I kind of missed it there, what you're getting is that the parabola will be folded right here along this line, along the axis of symmetry. So what is this x value? The x value here is at negative 2. So our interval of increase we're going to try to figure out what part of this graph is increasing. So if you cover up half of it, half of it meaning like you don't look at the side that has, you know, you just look at one side of the axis of symmetry. So if we're looking at the left side, read this like it's a book from left to right. Look at the graph. From left to right, it's going up, which means that it's increasing on the left side. And if you cover this up here and you look at it from the other direction, on the right side of the graph, if you read this like it's a book from left to right, notice that this graph is going down, which means it's decreasing on the other side. So now we're ready to write our intervals. Our interval of increase is right here, from negative infinity to negative 2. So from negative infinity to negative 2. And it can go, it's continuous over here, but it can actually hit the negative 2. And then the way we can write this as an inequality is negative infinity is less than x, which is less than or equal to negative 2. The interval of decrease, on the other hand, can go from here to here. So from negative 2 
to infinity. So curve bracket here, it can actually hit the negative 2 here. So what we'll say is it can go from negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than infinity. And we're still using the x because it's the x that we're looking at where we would fold the paper on the x-axis. And so those are our intervals. Finally, we have the axis of symmetry. That's that line that if you folded it, <coughs> it will actually cause the graph to be uh, symmetrical or a reflection. So if you fold it on this line, it cuts the graph in half. What's the equation of that line? Well, it goes up and down. Up and down, vertical equations are always x equals equations. So x equals, look right here, negative 2. What's the vertex? It's this highest point, which happens to be the maximum. So the vertex is here at negative 2, comma 4. So that's our vertex. And those are your characteristics of the function.